In this video, we are going over the five soccer passing habits that you need to develop. That's coming up next. What's up guys, it's Dave here from Simply Soccer and as you know, I'm here to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch and we do that through releasing weekly soccer tip, technique and training videos. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any new content that we release. Now in this video, I wanna go over some of the soccer passing habits you need to develop. Although this is one of the most fundamental skills in the game, as you climb the ladder of levels or you get into a higher level, you need to be developing this area even further. And I still find even at high levels, some players are making some common mistakes. So make sure you're not making these mistakes and make sure you're developing these good habits. So we're gonna start off with a really simple one, but it's keep it on the deck. Now, I know you've been in this situation before where a teammate has passed you the ball and it's a simple pass, an easy pass to do, and yet for some reason they've played it to you in the air. And it's really frustrating because it takes you longer to control and there's always that risk that you miscontrol it because it's like at shin height or something like that. It's really frustrating. So learn to keep the ball on the deck. Now this can come down to two reasons why you're not doing this. One, you lack the technique, which means you just need to practice your passing more so you can keep it low. Or two, it's lazy. And a lot of the times for most players, it's laziness where they're just not focusing and they just play it without thinking and it's lofted in the air unnecessarily. Next is make sure you're using the right amount of power. Tell me if this also frustrates you when a simple pass comes to you and it's just way too slow and then you have to sprint to the ball before an opponent gets to it. Or on the flip side, a teammate passes you a ball and for some reason they drill it into you from like five yards away, making it almost impossible to control. You need to make sure you're using the right power on your passes. And again, I think this just comes down from lack of focus or concentration when you're not thinking. You need to be turned on during the whole match, especially when it comes to passing, because you do not want to drill the ball into your teammates' feet unless the situation asks for that, and you don't want to pass it too lightly, again, unless the situation asks for that. Okay, so number three is knowing when to lead passes and knowing when to play into feet. Another very frustrating one, especially if you're getting a pass and you're bursting the space and your teammate plays it behind you or into your feet, which slows you down. You need to know when to pass the ball ahead of your teammate and want to play it into their feet. You know, as a quick guide to that, when a teammate is making a run and has plenty of space to work with, you want to play it ahead of them. If they have a defender in front of them or someone close by and they don't look like they're going to be making a run, you usually want to play it into their feet. Now that's a very simplistic version of what you really need to be doing, but that's a general guide. You need to know when you need to play your teammate ahead playing the ball in front of them and when playing it to their feet. Because if you play it ahead of them, when the situation doesn't call for it, you're most likely going to lose the ball or they have to go running after it and try and prevent it from going out of bounds. And if you play it to their feet, when they're trying to make a run into space, they now have to slow down and the potential counterattack or space that they were going to exploit is going to be closed down. So it's actually very important you know when to do this and get good at this, because if you don't, you're going to stop many potential counterattacks and and you're just gonna put your teammates into trouble. Okay, and number four is again, another really simple one, but it's a mistake so many players make and it's passing to the wrong foot. Now I find this usually happens again during small, little, simple passes where a player will play the ball to the wrong foot. It is important which foot you pass the ball to. For example, if I wanna open my body up towards the field and you play it to my other foot, I now have to take an additional touch to do so. So for example, if you're on my right side and you're playing it to me, you don't want to play it to my right foot if I'm trying to turn into the space. You want to play it into my left foot so I can do it immediately instead of having to touch it around there and do it. So make sure you're considering which foot you're passing the ball to. If you're passing it to the wrong foot, it's going to take more time for your teammate to control it or put it in the direction they want to go in. And in soccer, sometimes you only have a second or less to do something. So now they might have to shield the ball or pass the ball back instead of doing what they originally wanted to do. Finally, it's technique. You want to get really, really good with your passing technique. And of course, this is going to become a habit the more you practice. I'm not just talking about inside of the foot passing, 
flexing, I'm talking about the ability to curl a pass into space with the outside and inside of your foot. I'm talking about being able to drive a ball low. I'm talking about being able to do long passing. Essentially what I'm saying is make sure you're practicing your passing often because there are many different techniques and the more techniques you know, the better a player you're going to be and the more valuable to your team you're going to be. Just think about it, what's more valuable or who's more valuable? A player who can only pass with the inside and outside of their feet with very simple passes, that's good, they keep it safe, they play safe and they can do the small passes. Or a player who's able to use the inside and outside of their foot really well, spin the ball with both, able to chip the ball effectively, do low driven passes, do long driven passes, do lobbed passes, which one's going to be the better player in the team? Obviously the second one who has the more techniques down. So make sure you're developing many techniques and you're really good, especially at the simple techniques for passing. Thank you once again for tuning in to this video. I really do appreciate it. Please like and share this video because that allows me to keep creating these videos. And make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed the content because we release videos every single week that are gonna help you become a better player. I am gonna put two videos up on the screen so you can continue to watch and learn and become a better player and make sure you download my free ebook, Game Changer, if you haven't already, link in the description. Guys, once again, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.